Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to look at the new Pokemon Snap game. It's really popular right now, it's just come out, everyone's really excited, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's any good. You want to find out whether it is, whether it's worth your time and money, and whether the Switch version of the game actually advances from the Nintendo 64 version. So, if you're curious about the new Pokemon Snap, stick with me, MGN's going to go through it right now. Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo 64 was one of the most iconic games from that era. Pokemon was the bee's knees in the 90s, it was absolutely everywhere, and anything associated with the phenomenon sold like hotcakes. So when an on-rails shooter released wherein you could take photos and get points for capturing your favourite Pokemon released for the 64, it was an instant hit. Fast forward to 2021, and the much beloved Pokemon Snap finally gets a sequel. The Nintendo version or well, the Nintendo Switch version rather, gets announced, and then the internet loses its mind. Clearly if Nintendo was intent on cashing in on people's nostalgia, well, they've succeeded. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the game can stand up on its own two feet, being nostalgic for the original game will only take new Pokemon Snap so far. So how does that sequel stack up against the original? Was it worth the wait? How has the developer addressed the changes in both the Pokemon series and the industry in general? Strip all the nostalgia and hype away, and is Snap 2021 a good game in its own right as a standalone experience? Well, we're going to go through quickly right now and give you our impressions of both the things that the new version of Snap does well, and the things that it doesn't get right. Okay, we're going to start with the good. The first point is, it's got relaxing gameplay. I think that's the point of Pokemon Snap. You can just sit down, relax, and enjoy the slow pace of the on-rails aspect of the game, and just shoot some photos of your favourite little critters. Everything about Snap 21 is set to relax the player. The music, the aesthetic, the activity of your gameplay is designed just to be a really chilled experience and this is something the game achieves as well as it desires. Next, the bad. The vast majority of the Pokemon are missing. There are only 214 odd Pokemon in the new Snap game out of a total of 898. So it's highly likely that your favorite of the 684 is one of the remainder that's just completely left out of the game. What does this mean? Well, the same thing happened in Sword and Shield, and those games later charged the player money through DLC to access the Pokemon initially left out. So, it's likely that if you want to snap pictures of your favorite Pokemon in the future, it's going to cost you money. Next, the good. The features work well with the Switch. We simply didn't have the opportunity to port the photos we took in the original game to our computers or what have you, but with the Switch release, the player can take the photos, put them on their storage device, and then the sky's the limit. Upload your favorite picture to your computer, use it as a desktop wallpaper. Look, the technology of having the sequel on the Switch means the possibilities are pretty much endless for using the photos you've taken in-game. Too bad. On Rails feels pretty clunky for the modern era. The 64 version of the game was limited by the hardware, obviously, but that's not really the case now. An opportunity to evolve the series and actually have the player be a roaming photographer exploring the land, snapping shots, was absolutely an option. But instead, we're stuck with another on-rails game in 2021? That doesn't make much sense to me. Next, the good. Pokemon Snap is now portable. If you want to play the original on the go, you'd have to be packing like a generator and the TV in your backpack. Good luck with that. But the latest iteration can literally be played anywhere. That's more praise for what Nintendo has achieved with their latest console rather than for the game itself. But nevertheless, playing Snap on the go feels good and it deserves a mention. Next to bad, scoring is wildly inconsistent. This one pretty much explains itself. The scoring system in Snap 21 doesn't feel consistent whatsoever. You might take a picture that you yourself deem pretty underwhelming or with a mistimed shot and the game's internal scoring will wildly praise you for it. Wild. The same can be said for the inverse. You might get a perfect shot only to be disappointed with an abysmal score afterward. There doesn't really appear to be any rhyme or reason to it. Next to good, fans finally get another Snap game. This is what will move units. The powers that be over at Nintendo and the Pokemon company genuinely listening to their fan base of late. They haven't quit, quite hit the mark when it comes to execution of that desire, but at least they're acknowledging the desire. This is a good step in the right direction. People have wanted Pokemon Snap to be a series with regular iterations for a long time. And finally their prayers are answered. Only time will tell if the series will continue, but at least there's something new for now. The bad, it gets old pretty quick. Simply put, there isn't enough content. 
The entire experience feels like a mini game that could have been tacked on to a properly executed JRPG Pokemon experience. Don't get me wrong, I love the concept and I think there's potential for a full Pokemon Snap standalone experience, but this isn't it. It's really simple, there's no depth whatsoever, it just feels phoned in, it gets boring quite quickly. Which brings me to my next point, another the bad point, it's overpriced for the amount of content there is. If I'm paying full price, I wanted a he heck of a lot more content than Snap 21 has. I wouldn't mind if there was a really expansive experience with every Pokemon included, and some genuinely well thought out depth, and a great region to explore. But as of right now, you're paying way too much for what is essentially a minigame. You're not getting value for money whatsoever if you pay the full price for Snap in 21. Wait for a sale, and, and at that, wait for a good sale. Next is another bad point. Animations and graphics are awful. You'd think with the vast majority of Pokemon cards being left out, this would mean that the developer would dedicate their time and resources into perfecting the ones they bothered to include. And you'd be wrong. The graphics look extremely rough and the animations look like animatronics from a carnival that went bankrupt a decade ago. What's the excuse for this considering there are so few Pokemon in the game? There isn't really one, none that I can think of anyway. Makes the whole game feel rushed and slapped together with no passion whatsoever for the project. In closing, like that's going to wrap things up for our initial impressions of the new Snap game thus far. If you agree or disagree with any of the points we've made, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.GG blog, the YouTube channel, our new Discord, or our new Twitter. That's all in the video description. We'd love to hear from you.